Welcome to the special edition of Go Vote Omaha. This is a special topics forum presented by the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha. I'm Debbie Ford, a League member and the moderator for the forum this evening. The League never supports or opposes political parties or candidates. We present this forum solely for voter education. This year we celebrate the League of Women Voters 100th anniversary. The Nebraska League's co-presidents, Linda Duckworth and Diane Bystrom are with us to talk about plans for this year and the anniversary celebration. In our session today, we will hear about Linda and Diane's backgrounds, their vision for the League of Women Voters Nebraska, this year's 19th Amendment activities, other activity, and other activities. Welcome, Linda and Diane. Thank you very much. Please tell us about your background and how you became interested in members in the League. You want to start, Linda? I'd be happy to. Uh, I, I can't, I've told this so many times, but I have to say that uh, back in St. Louis uh, in, the, in the late 1990s, I joined the League of Women Voters and I was uh, pretty excited about what I was able to learn about um, our government and also to meet the amazing people who happened to join the League. So then when we moved here in 2004, I wanted to know more about this unicameral legislature and, ha and get to know the people who actually make um, the th things run here and so I immediately joined the league and then I became rather active and then uh, be, and then I ended up on the board and so anyway I've held since then I've held uh, quite a few positions on the the uh, state board and the local board uh, is, in fact I've been president of the Omaha League of Women Voters Greater Omaha League of Women Voters and also I've been president previously of the state League of Women Voters and I held a position for two years uh, on the national level I was the chair of the nominating committee. So, um, so that's my league experience. Before that, I was, I mean, I'm a, a mom, but I also, and a, and a wife, and a, um, and a gardener, um, but also I've been a children's librarian and an English teacher. So I've got that kind of background too. So I think that's a, enough about me. Okay. Let's go to Diane. <laughs> Diane. Hi, um, I'm a native of Fremont, Nebraska, and actually got my bachelor's degree in journalism at Kearney State, which is now the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Started out as a newspaper reporter, that was my lifelong goal, but uh, got married. Uh, we moved to Oklahoma so my husband could be a law professor, so my career changed really from journalism to higher education. So I've actually been out of state for 40 years. I was at the University of Oklahoma for 17 years, and while I was there, I got a master's and PhD and then took a job because uh, I wanted to be closer to my family. So took a job in 1996 at Iowa State University and directed the Carrie Chapman Cat Center for Women in Politics. And of course, Carrie Chapman Cat is the, uh, was the national leader of, toward the 19th Amendment uh, during that to winning plan of hers from 1915 to uh, 1920. Uh, so directed the Center for Women in Politics. And, uh, and so I've been involved in the league in three different states. I joined in 1995 in, uh, in Oklahoma, which was the 75th anniversary of the 19th Amendment that year. And then uh, was only there for about a year when I did that and then moved to uh, Ames, Iowa. And of course, with the directing the Center for Women in Politics, became very involved with the league. The uh, center partnered all the time with the League of Women Voters. I did not have the leadership that Linda has. I was on the state board for about six years. Uh, actually, when Deb Turner was chair, and so she's now in Omaha and is on the national mm -hmm. board. And uh, so my, my main engagement with the League of Women Voters when I was in Iowa was really on voter registration drives that we did at Iowa State and uh, some things that we did with the Secretary of State's office. I retired from Iowa State a year ago, uh, moved south of Plattsmouth, Nebraska, and uh, immediately transferred my membership, or I guess rejoined and became a member of the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha. Okay, well, welcome to both of you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you tell us a little bit about the differences among the national, state, and local levels? It, it's, it's, it's patterned pretty much on our uh, government. And so we've got the federal government, we've got the state governments, and then we've got the local governments. And that's uh, how it was set up long ago. For, so, so we've got uh, people at, in Washington um, who work on our behalf, and they are in communication with our uh, elected leaders. And then we've got, and they also, um, obviously we're in very good communication and we hope to have a good relationship with each other and all that. But basically we are, we, uh, the state of Nebraska, League of Women Voters, we are um, able to, to uh, make our policies and, and make our programs so that um, we get to decide how we want. And of course, if, if there are policies that uh, it's possible that national 
policy or program can supersede ours. But at any rate, we are these three separate and yet um, pretty much together. So um, what I would like to say about the local or about the state, our state level, is that we've got just a wonderful team put together for this next uh, biennium. And uh, I'm excited to have Diane as my co-president. Mm -hmm. She's just been, you know, she's, she's just very professional and she um, is extremely knowledgeable and, and especially for this coming year because she knows so much about women's suffrage, about the history of women's suffrage. So that's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. Uh, but anyway, we've just, we have several members from Omaha who are on the state board with us, but we've also got members from the other uh, three uh, local leagues too, which are Seward and Hastings and Lincoln. So I think it's a great combination of people who are, wor that we're working with. So it sounds like a good representation for across the state. I, th I think so, yeah. Okay. As co-presidents, <coughs> what is your vision for the Nebraska League during your presidency? You want to take that one? I'll start off. and yeah. uh, Well, actually, at our first meeting, so we had our first board meeting on July 20th with our new board. And as Linda said, too, just a great group of people. And I think this year, uh, I think mainly to Linda's credit, did a good job. In re and Katie Falcon, uh, who was the membership chair for the or the nominating committee chair for the state league last year. And we have uh, young, some young women on the board. We have, uh, you know, I think we have more diversity on the board. And so I think we do have, a, and then we have people that have been on the board and, and, and offer a lot of longevity. Um, we uh, did a, uh, uh, an exercise based on a class I taught at Iowa State on leadership. Uh, you know a lot about leadership activities. <laughs> and so we did a visioning exercise that you've probably done before. And so we went through that at, with the goal of uh, boiling down um, kind of individual goals and then some group goals and then a large picture goal and tried to boil it, boil it down to vision. And we're, we're going to be finalizing that at our October board meeting. But what emerged, and maybe I'll talk about the first two and you can talk about okay, the sure. second. Mm -hmm. So one of the, so this, these were kind of in rank order <laughs> after we uh, did this uh, activity. Uh, the, the most uh, important uh, vision or goal for the members of the state board was really um, voting, which is not surprising. That's a major issue for the League of Women Voters nationally, locally, and by state. And so what we really talked about, and we'll flesh it out more in October, is that we want to really, um, we want to enhance voting. We want to, you know, in, in, we want to grow the number of voters in, in, um, in Nebraska through educational activities that the league's always been involved in. That includes our registration drives. We already, we have 22 during the month of September in the Omaha area under the leadership of Joanna Lindbergh and Carol, the uh, Carol Thiel. And then the other thing is really then get out the vote. And so we're interested in that. Of course, a big thing for the Nebraska League is tracking legislation. And that was a, a second goal for us. Uh, we, though, did talk a lot this time about being really strategic and collaborating with other organizations in the state. So what we're hoping to flesh out in October and again, it's a little early because we don't know quite what's going to be before the legislature, but we have some interests that are carried over from last year. But uh, we want to just you know, think about things that we can really have an impact on as far as tracking legislation. And Sherry Miller does a great job uh, for that. She's our vice uh, president. So. And she's our, also our immediate uh, past president. Yes. And, oh, so, okay. so she, and she was president for six years. And so over that six years, she really got into the uh, legislation. And she got more and more and more interested. And, uh, she was a fixture at the Capitol, and she will continue to be a fixture at the Capitol, you know, providing testimony. And our other two goals, and Linda will flush them out, were uh, basically more diversity with membership and then visibility. So Linda right. can kind of so, fill in yes, the blanks and, there. And uh, right, so we have, we uh, are working on an assessment for our, we would call it the DEI assessment, so it's diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's really important to us, and I'm glad that it, it was one of our top goals because um, it's important to me too. It's important to both of us. And uh, so we are, we've got uh, lots of work to do, you know, to increase our diversity of all types, racial diversity and um, uh, just every possible kind. And so we want to uh, work on that. But, and also our, just our visibility. We want, when, peop when people hear the name League of Women Voters, we want that to not be the first time that they've ever heard that name. And you know that does happen sometimes, obviously. So, um, and it, we want it to be a very positive connotation also. So, um, it, what did I forget about that? I think that- No, um, and I think it kind of gets, of course, the 19th Amendment, the celebration well, of, of course, that. Well, that'll we, be a we'll, big thing. That'll be a big thing, yeah. thing I and think. And it's already started. It's already yeah. started. So our visibility yeah. will be tied in somewhat, that celebration of the- 
yeah. 100th anniversary. Yeah, so we did have a kickoff. Yes. Very good. Yes. Before we go uh -huh. there, tell yeah. me a little bit more <coughs> about, you said you wanted to be strategic about tracking legislation and working collaborati with, mm -hmm. collaboratively with other organizations. Mm -hmm. What other organizations are potential partners? Well, we already partner with a number, and you know I'm new here, so I'm going to say what I've been familiar with. So certainly, Civic Nebraska is someone okay. that we par partner with, and also the Nebraska Civic Engagement Table. Those are two that I've had the pleasure of working with. Of course, ne Nebraska Civic Engagement Table. We, uh, Linda and I, both represented the state league at their, I think it was their quarter their quarterly meeting that they just had this summer and there were I think 50 different organizations there but you know oh, we wow. work a lot and it with doesn't them. mean that we would be with yeah. all 50 of them but we it's a great way to get to know these other organizations mm -hmm. to get know to know people from there okay. we've and we have worked with Nebraska Appleseed in the past okay. and I'm sure we will again mm -hmm. okay uh, and then there are also conservation um, organizations because one of our uh, portfolios is ha, does have to do with the environment it's actually called natural resources and then energy is kind of um, in with that too so we've got you know we have we are co's we're the co-presidents but we also have some co-directors and uh, I and it seems to be working out really <laughs> well you know that they are they it's nobody is overwhelmed and they can look to each other to um, you know discuss possibilities and so the two um, young women who are the co-directors of natural resources are working together but they are getting they both happen to happen to live in Lincoln so they can get together with each other and they can go to lots of different meetings and they can they can see what el what all is going on and they can be on um, uh, you know phone calls with other organizations that are that are tracking legislation having to do with that or whatever other um, you know more localized kind of um, policy making so okay. and I think in addition what Linda and I talked about that in addition to sort of sharing the load uh, and that's the word volunteer organization and kind mm -hmm. of explain that we also Linda and I also saw it as sort of a leadership pipeline so uh -huh. in the case of natural resources we have two young women but we have other pairs of core directors uh, for example with um, uh, mental health and behavioral health where we're pairing someone who's been a long time in the field with a younger woman and so again I think this is another way to you know through the co-directorships to identify younger women and bring them into leadership roles within the league yeah. okay yeah sounds good tell us more about your plans for the exciting year we have for the 19th amendment so there's so much who wants to kick exciting. off why don't you talk about Monday I can, I can talk about Monday the okay. kickoff yes and then I'll talk about the state fair tomorrow so okay, okay. Right. you'll be there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. So uh, well, actually, I would say back in February, it started with Senator Lynn Walz. She, uh, I think it was Diane mm -hmm. who asked Senator Lynn Walz to um, to put forth a resolution to make August 2019 uh, national or, or Nebraska Woman Suffrage Month. Did I get that right? That's right. <laughs> okay. And um, so that passed unanimously. That was great, and we were there to. to some of us were there to celebrate that. And so then on uh, Monday, this past Monday, which was August 26th, that was, um, um, what is it again? It's Women's, Women's, Equal Women's, Equality, Women's Equality Day. Day. Equality Day. Women's Thank Equality you. Day. That's right. <laughs> Women's Equality Day. So it just so happened that that was, that was the very same evening that we would ordinarily have dine and discuss. It was the fourth Monday of the month. So here in Omaha, that's what we do. And so um, we got to listen to Judge Laurie Smith Camp, who is the eighth uh, uh, District Eight Circuit District. <laughs> Here I am, um, uh, Justice for a judge for the Eighth District, and so um, she gave a wonderful talk about the Nineteenth Amendment, uh, especially in Nebraska and how Nebraska was, uh, you know, the two different organizations, the National um, Women's Suffrage Association and the American Women's Suffrage Association, and and there was it was fantastic. We had and our mayor was there, Mayor Stother was there. Our first lady was there, Suzanne Shore, uh, Senator Lynn Walsh was there, and uh, and like 95, at least we had at least 95 folks, 95 people, Great. mostly members, who were there for this wonderful celebration. And so I do want to have a, a shout out for Mary Lee Moulton and um, Bridget Claiborne. Claiborne. They were both just really stellar in putting it all together because it was a big job. So, yeah. Well, uh, we had an opportunity again through civic engagement. So one of the, uh, we actually have a board member, Bridget Claiborne, who she just mentioned, who works uh, for Civic Nebraska, but is a member 
of uh, the state board, uh, and, um, and she's also quite active in the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha. So she works for Civic Nebraska. They have a table at the state fair, and so they offered us the opportunity to table with them at the oh, state nice. fair. So we started doing that. Mary Lee was the first one, I guess it was last Friday, when the fair opened. I'm going tomorrow uh, with my husband, who's also joined the league here, and so we're going to do the state fair, and then Linda's doing Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday. 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 Wow. We're just there the today. And so, um, and, and we hadn't planned on doing the state year, fair this year. We hope to have a presence next year as part of the 100th anniversary celebration, but we had this wonderful opportunity from Civic Nebraska. So uh, we're putting up pictures on our Facebook page, but we have, uh, we kind of had a fun, I have to admit, I kind of stole this from the Iowa State Fair where they have their corn poll for presidential candidates, but we have a corn poll and mainly kids are voting for their favorite fair ride. And so um, we're doing something like that. So we have things that we're passing out candy and stuff and there's an opportunity for voter registration. So uh, anyway, it kind of gives us a test run for next year, but uh, mm -hmm. we're partnering with them to do that. And then I, the next thing that we're doing, you might want to talk about it, it's what you were planning to do going to Iowa. So rather than me talk about it, you can talk okay, about your I'll plan trip to Iowa. Bit because okay. it's, it, we don't really yeah. have it uh, yeah. well Fleshed put together out. at all. But it's been my dream, my personal dream for a while now to, uh, on in this, sometime in this year, to make a pilgrimage, as it were, to uh, the <laughs> oh, home of Carrie, Ch yeah. Carrie okay. Chapman Cat. Yes. Her, uh -huh. her girlhood home is in Charles City, Iowa, and I've been there. I was there one time, and I, when I was there, I said, "Okay, we've got to, we've got to bring league members." And, and so we are, we have that in mind, and we also, uh, and I'm not going to say the dates yet, maybe, um, but also there will be a big conference at Iowa State in Ames, and uh, the author of the Women's Hour will be is though yeah it's the Women's Hour, <laughs> the <laughs> Women's Hour, the Women's, women's Hour. Yeah. Uh, Elaine Weiss, she will be the keynote speaker. She'll be there, but also. A play that I hear is just wonderful called The Yellow Rose of Suffrage and more there's more than that so we want to do that also but then also there's this historic hotel there's the la the, re the last remaining Frank Lloyd Wright uh, designed and built hotel and that's in Mason City Iowa okay. so somehow we're gonna make all of that happen and in one trip? In one yeah. trip. Yes, yes. One, we, we, one we overnight worked, trip. We worked out the logistics the other day. We actually by, did. Yeah, yeah, we did. And so then yeah. Linda sent an email. So that'll be fun. I was planning to go anyway. And so I'm actually still on some subcommittees with the, the Iowa planning group. Mm -hmm. They've got a huge planning group. And so I guess Linda, so there is a kickoff there. But then um, before that, uh, we're going to be kicking off here. Uh, well, we've already kicked off. But our legislative day is February 12th, okay. and so we'll be having something at the state legislature that day. In addition to legislative day, uh, Mary Lee Moulton has the idea that we'll have a cake for legislators, and then Linda and I actually had a great meeting uh, just Tuesday with uh, Secretary of State Evnen and uh, his Assistant Secretary of State Cindy Allen, and during that meeting we found out that they actually have a suffrage exhibit coming from the National Archives, okay. and so uh, it looks like we'll be able to have that on February 12th and yes. also for some other events. Yes. And then uh, I would guess that the next big thing is next August, a year from now, will mm -hmm. the the uh, judicial conference, the Ace Judicial okay. Conference, and that will include all of the the states, uh, the lawyers. And it's not just the judges this time. It, it, I guess she said every other year it's judges and, and lawyers. lawyers. So judges and lawyers will be will be there, and uh, they wanted the the state leagues who are involved to be very involved in that. And so we will have a big display. We're working on it right now, and other states are working on theirs too. Apparently, Iowa already has theirs ready to go. Okay, yeah, theirs ready to go. <laughs> but we're working on two. We're going to have one on women of color and the suffrage movement that's coming out of the Cat Center. A little bit before that, though, we're going to be in the parade. We forgot. We're oh, that right, parade. July Fourth parade. Oh, yes, yes. So let's Stewart not is, forget. Uh, they're having yeah. a special Fourth of July parade with the theme on women's suffrage, and so oh, okay. we'll we're, we're hoping to have a big presence there in the parade. And Linda and I have committed to walking or waving or something like that. Mm -hmm. so and I'll be Seward. dressed up as Susan B. Anthony. Oh, yes. that's wonderful. Yes, I will, yeah. I'll okay. be, uh, so, so we're doing that as well. Uh -huh. so, and then we'll have some kind of ending event. Uh, I, we haven't decided what. I have a, a meeting coming up to plan that, but we'll have some kind of wrap-ups. Right. And then the state fair probably as well. We'll probably go into the yes, state fair. Yes, that's right. It, it's so. going to be really busy, especially yeah. next summer. Yeah. Gosh, it's, yeah, it's, July it, and August both, yeah. A lot of different events. Yeah. So exciting ones. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have a great slate of events, to, um, but you also mentioned in our discussion that there were other events that are also going to be occurring over the next year. Do you want to talk about those? 
the well, dark money um, crimes? I'll talk about one coming up, and then maybe you can go more into Legislative Day. Um, mm -hmm. We sure. are working with the Lincoln League of Women Voters. They're, uh, they're co-sponsoring an OLLI uh, course, uh, which is the Osher, Osher Lifelong Learning ah, Institute. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they're having a four-part series on dark money and, and politics in general. And so uh, the Lincoln League is a, co uh, is a sponsor of that. Uh, one of our board members is deeply involved in it, our treasurer, Kate High. And so that's in October and November. I think it starts at the end of October and it wraps up of in this November. Year. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah. And I'll be moderating uh, the second panel, or the, the, the first panel is actually, or the first day is actually watching the uh, documentary on dark money. And then the second is a panel of, of two former legislators, one current legislator and a journalist. And I'll be moderating that. And so that's kind of an event that we're doing with the Lincoln League, but they're mainly the the movers and shakers on that, and then Legislative Day is the 12th. And yes, and those. we've been doing this for many, many years. Uh, it'll be the 12th of February. Of course, our birthday, the the 100th birthday of the League of Women, League of Women Voters, is um, February 14th. But that's okay. a Friday. Okay. We won't <laughs> see. We won't be seeing very many senators yeah. there on Friday. So we're having it on Wednesday, the 12th, and. Um, and it, it, well, it, it will be similar to all the other, the previous legislative days. And sometimes it's called lobby day, which is fine too, because that is what we are there to do, if we want to. It, it's uh, one reason we call it legislative day is because we want people to come, we want members to come, whether they feel comfortable lobbying or not. Okay. Um, but we do try to have, provide good enough information that they would feel comfortable doing that, going to their senator's offices and, or, or even uh, um, pulling the senators out of the chamber and speaking to them. Uh, so we will have, you know, probably uh, three, I, you know, somewhere between one and three um, bills that we will be focusing on for okay. Legislative Day. And we will, uh, and we'll have senators come in and talk about those. And, and then well, we, we have lunch and usually have lunch in the governor's mansion. We will probably do that. I don't know if that's completely, it's it is, it is, it is settled, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, and then, uh, then the option is to go to a hearing and sit in on a hearing after that which is always a really interesting thing too. So it's a, yeah, I, um, those, a lot of newer members come to that and they're always pretty excited about uh, the experience. So just okay. want to talk that one up. All right, yeah. great. Well, speaking of new members, there's an event on Thursday, September 26th for new members. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? Here in the, in, in for the Omaha League, mm -hmm. right? For the Omaha League, yes. yes right. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have our uh, local, uh, we've got co-presidents also uh, locally. We've got Crystal Fox and we've got Rebecca Armstrong Langle. And so they'll be there, but several board members will be there too to talk about their committees. And then there will be committee chairs also. So we'll, be, uh, we'll have that. But, but mostly we just want it to be um, a time where people can get to know each other, the newer members, and get to know all of us. And we can get to know them over some, you know, uh, nice appetizers and wine and that sort of thing and so it, it should I think it will be very informative it will be at the office uh, actually it won't be at the office it'll be in the combine room I think that's on the second floor mm -hmm. and what is the time is it say 5 30 to 7 30 mm -hmm. 7 something like that yeah so okay. yes and do come whether you're new or not 1905 Harney Street and so it's a great uh, that's another thing I did I'd like to thank Ann Charlson for making that move because we have a great facility now and it really helps us uh, put events there mm -hmm. and like our big celebration on August 26th, um, you know, we have a great facility, an office there, but we have the access to conference rooms and large venues that where we can do big events. Mm -hmm. And people are beginning to figure out the parking too, so. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. and I like it because it only takes me 30 minutes from Plattsmouth to get there. So. <laughs> You've talked about events in Omaha, Lincoln, and Seward. Are there other, what other kinds of activities are going on across the state? Well, over in Hastings, uh, this, in April, we'll have our, our um, annual meeting. So it'll be our, all of us, uh, all members from Together. the state will be, mm -hmm. and we no longer have uh, conventions and councils. And one reason our board several years ago decided to make it, an, to, a couple of reasons actually, for having annual meetings instead of councils and conventions. You can only um, change the program, you can only make program decisions on uh, when it's a convention. You can't do it at a council. Oh, okay. But if it's an annual meeting, you can do it every single year. So that gives us a little bit more flexibility there. And then um, the, um, the other reason we have uh, annual meeting is in, instead is so that uh, everybody can come. You know, you don't have to be a delegate from your, you just all members are very, very welcome. And it's always a good time, so. 
That's another one we want. We could keep league members really busy, couldn't we? Yes, yeah. you could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For a really good reason. Yeah. Right. And I think the other thing, of course, uh, Omaha is doing Dine and Discuss, and so uh, Linda has some kind of role in that, I believe. Yes, uh, I do. So I so continue to have a role sorry. in that. She yeah. has a role in, in many, many things. <laughs> right. So yeah. we, we talked uh, the other day when we, after we met with the Secretary of State on some of the things she's planning for that, so there'll be that. And I think Lincoln has lunch and learn. That's right. We have dine and discuss, which and is in the evening. They have lunch and learn, which is, you know, obviously during and the so day. a lot yeah. of those programs are going to yeah. focus on the suffrage, you know. Okay. And, and then I think the other thing, and it kind of ties <clears> into <throat> one of the things Linda talked about earlier when she was talking about uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, is that we want to make sure that we have some programs, you know, because the story of, you know, women of color in the suffrage movement really was untold for mm -hmm. years. And so I, we think that both the, nat the national state and the local leagues think that uh, we we tell the story of the 19th Amendment by telling the story of also women of color in it, but also working class women and immigrant women, and so and, and so I think those are stories to tell here. And by the way, we all went to a fab. If you haven't seen it yet, the Nebraska History Museum has a fabulous exhibit that opened it, on mm -hmm. the 16th, and we came, and Linda was dressed as Susan B. Anthony, and. Uh, so it, it's it's really, I mean, I have studied the suffrage movement, as Linda noted, and I really think it's a fabulous exhibit. And I think it really, again, di you know, discusses diversity in the movement and the need to, for recognizing, um, you know, people, women of color, particularly in Nebraska, but also other women that were involved in the movement here. But it's it's very well done. And I would like to add uh, the the topic of women of, in, of color. Um, we will. I think that's going to be something that we focus on with our Urban Abbey um, mm -hmm. partnership, which is going to be in July. And this is another thing. I forgot that's, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. A, yet yeah. another yeah. thing happening next year. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, but anyway, that's going to be, we will have at least two programs with uh, Urban Abbey next July, but I suspect it'll be three or four. So, um, and that's kind of what we are looking to focus on. So I'm excited about that. So yeah. a lot of exciting wide variety. Probably of a number of things up. I've forgotten to mention. <laughs> <laughs> and they can go to the web website. Find more right, there will be some more good info. Okay, this concludes our forum about 19, 19, 20. <laughs> <laughs> 2019 to 2020 plans for the League of Women Voters in Nebraska. The League thanks Linda Duckworth and Diane Bystrom for participating. For the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha, I am Debbie Ford reminding you to inform yourself about the issues and candidates and go vote Omaha. Hooray. <laughs>